I left my mother's house at 15 with a dime and a suit of clothes. All set to hit the first car by, right to where it goes. But who is gonna go, you crooked mind? Well, I got to New York City where they look me up and down. And I fought off St. Mark's place, I gave up the crown. Who's gonna go, you crooked mile? Who's gonna go, you crooked mile? Who's gonna haul your load? Who's gonna come out in the dark, find you on that road? Out in California, I was spinning these blue skies When I fell hard off for a girl with raindrops in her eyes Ooh, go, you crooked mouth Well, who's gonna hold your lily white hand? Who's gonna drive you? Who's gonna be up on love and kiss you on the mouth? Who's gonna go, you crooked mouth? Who's gonna go, you crooked mouth? Who's gonna haul your load? Who's gonna come out in the dark to find you on that To the Holy Ghost when I said, Jesus, please, who's gonna go your crooked mind? Well, my way still runs crooked, the highway's up above. Only thing I found that counts in this world is love. Who's gonna go your crooked mind? Who's gonna go, you crooked mob? Who's gonna haul your load? Who's gonna come out in the dark to find you on that road? Tell me who gonna go, your crooked mob? Tell me who who's gonna go, your crooked Tell me who gonna go, your crooked Peter, you're touring around a lot, playing acoustic guitar, you're saying, around the country. That's been going on for a few years now. Um, what was the, you know, we, we were just talking about this a little bit, but what was the deciding factor to kind of just kind of go solo and, and just you and the acoustics on stage? Well, that's the kind of music I've loved for a really long time. When I was a kid, I uh, was living with a bunch of hippies in this insane house when I was about 16, and uh, I couldn't stand it anymore, so I was in Buffalo, and I hitched about 600 miles and went to Boston in a blizzard, and I was walking by a theater, and uh, Lightning Hopkins was playing there. And so I went in and saw him play, and it was just him and a guitar. And it was one of the most profound, eye-opening experiences I ever had in my life, it's just how far out it could be to see somebody playing like that so that was one thing and then you know i played with a lot of rock and roll bands but when i showed up in the west coast i was just playing this you know acoustic guitar and um and uh playing you know playing on the street or playing uh you know the coffee gallery and these different places like that 
So I go, it went, you know, that was a kind of music I already loved, and I loved the records of, uh, like, blues singers, especially, the, you know. I wasn't so much into the singer-songwriter thing, like, maybe that was just sort of starting to happen when I came to California, but what, what I did love was uh, the blues singers like Robert Johnson and um, who else was I into? Uh, Mississippi John Hurt, Skip James, and... Um, people like that. And so I really loved that kind of music when I was a kid. So I understood it as like a complete form of music. To me, I wasn't into like a unplug, like, you know, Robert Johns is not unplugged, you know. Right. He's right. just doing his music. And so I got into bands. It seemed exciting to get into bands. And I started playing bass and joining the Nerves. And that, mm -hmm. that was like at the very start of a whole period of music that um, continued for me for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. And towards the end of it, you know, it was like five years with the nerves and like five years with the plimsolls. And at the end of it, I was really getting back into uh, where I'd come from in the first place, you know, sort of connecting all the dots. And the songs, too, uh, started to become something that I could put across as a solo player. It took a while, you know, to, for the whole thing to make sense for me. I'm a slow learner, you know, so it took a while for me to get it all together. But then, so I went solo in 84 mm -hmm. after the nerves broke up, or after the plimsolls broke up. And, um, you know, I made records with bands, and every once in a while I'd take a band on the road. The last straw was I took a band out in 89 on the Blue Guitar album. I had a great band, and we went on the road all around the country. And uh, I got home, and I was, like, in so much debt from the tour. The tour had done well, but it didn't matter that I had to immediately go back on the road solo to pay the bills, you know, pay for the van and all this other stuff that I owed from the... And, you know, I realized one of the reasons why Woody Guthrie was always solo is because uh, it's an economic decision. Uh, you're very free, you know. You have, like, a real freedom as a musician that you don't really have in a band. When a band, sometimes, you know, you, you're locked into this whole um, family kind of situation. And I always had problems with that in mm. the first place. <laughs> Anyhow, you know, it's how I ended up on the West Coast. I don't know. This is off this record called uh, Wig, it was called. And it was after I got I got real sick and I, ended, I almost died in there. They had, like, a big operation and all this kind of stuff. And... Um, a bunch of people came together and helped me out and got me through it, really. T-Bone and uh, Burnett and a bunch of different people. Loudon Wainwright and Van Dyke Parks and Richard Thompson. And I don't know, this might have something to do with this song. I don't know. Yeah, the song's just come to you, but... Wonderland and wall, waiting for the light to change and wondering where to go. Take the bottles to the grocery, sell the records to the shop. Step off on the sidewalk and make the traffic stop. Cause the phones are disconnected and the landlords at the door. The tow trucks at the curbside get a repossessed the floor. And there's a house where party tonight, everybody shake. Oh. We're gonna blow the roof sky high We're gonna catch a break Cause when they put you on the street You can sit and watch the dawn But there's always something you can do When your last gold dollar's gone He's got his double-breasted jacket some cherry wingtip shoes Big old hat with a feather high And a pocket flask of booze But he can't afford the treatments And there ain't another cure Sad to say without more pay He won't get well no more Then the night falls up on Broadway And the neon starts to shine And the dancers in the love act Getting ready for the grind And there's a house round party tonight Everybody shake Oh we're gonna blow the roof sky high We're gonna catch a break And I know we're gonna make it Don't care what I have to do And I know you do the same for me As I would do for you And there's a house rent party tonight
So I bought a lucky ticket and I pinned it to the shelf. I put one away for you, baby, then I kept one for myself. I'm gonna take my winnings, I'm gonna disappear. I'm gonna start a brand new band, we'll play anywhere but here. Cause there's nothing coming in, and sugar, nothing's going out. There's nothing left to talk about if all we do is shine. And there's a house rent party tonight, everybody shake. Oh, we're gonna blow the roof sky high, see how much we can take. And I know we're gonna make it, don't care what I have to do And I know you do the same for me as I would do for you And there's a house rent party tonight Everybody's shit oh, We're gonna blow the roof sky high Oh, we're gonna catch a break and I know we're gonna make it, don't care what I have to do And I know you do the same for me as I would do for you And there's a house room party tonight When you're doing a gig like this, you gotta have some sort of guitar that turns you on, you know, and makes you want to make music, so that's the main thing, really, if you're gonna go solo, is have a guitar it's one of the main things. You have to have songs and be able to sing them, but really you got to have a guitar that like is a, exciting to you on some level to play, you know, because that's what you're, that's the main part of the show. So I just started taking this out though again a few years back. Yeah, Taylor gave me this back in the day, and uh, it's a jumbo. Uh, you know, I went down to McCabe's one night to see John Hammond Jr. play, and uh, he was in about halfway through his set, and he reached up. I don't know if he broke a string or what, and he reached up on the wall and pulled a, a, a maple 12-string off the wall and just started rocking on it. It was exactly like this one. And like I'm like, that's like the coolest music I've ever heard. He was just rocking so hard on this 12-string, playing the blues on a 12-string, you know? And uh, it was just fantastic. And then he thought so too, because I wanted to get that guitar and he bought it. You know, I, didn't, I don't know if I had the money or not, but he took the guitar out of the store, you know, that day. Like it was part of his show from then on. I started talking to Taylor, and then uh, you know we worked out some sort of thing. I guess it was like an endorsement or something. I'm not really sure how it all went down, but they made me this guitar to specifications because it's exactly like the one he was playing there. And uh, it, you know, it's, it sounds better. It keeps sounding better. It, you know, I've played it for 25 years or something like that, so it's like starting to get like a. got a nice sound to it and I, I love it on the road and I play a lot of you know. you know it's got a great sound through a PA the bags pickups in there and I use it with that box that they make and uh, mm -hmm. and you know I've recorded with it I mean I've recorded with it on almost all my albums at some point or other and I've used it on a lot of other people's records that I produce but uh, I love this guitar it's probably my favorite thing playing the 12 string now <laughs> 